A nasal polyp is a clump of epithelial cells that forms a small bump or overgrowth of tissue along the lining of the nasal cavity, which is the inside of the nose. The nasal cavity is made up of three regions. The first is the nasal vestibule, which is the area just inside the nostrils. Beyond that is the respiratory region, which delivers air to the sinuses and lungs. And above that is the olfactory region, which is involved in smelling. Lining the respiratory region are epithelial cells that create mucus to moisten the air and trap pathogens. There are also air-filled spaces within the skull that are on either side of the nose called paranasal sinuses, and these are lined by the same layer of epithelial cells as the respiratory region. The paranasal sinuses are named for the bones that house the sinus, the sphenoid, located next to the eyes, the ethmoid between the eyes, the frontal above the eyes behind the forehead, and the maxillary behind the cheeks and below the eyes. Each of the sinuses normally produce mucus, which drain into the respiratory region. Holes at the back of the respiratory region, called coenae, act like funnels to direct the mucus into the throat to be swallowed. Nasal polyps develop when epithelial cells that line the respiratory region simply overgrow, a process called hyperplasia. Most of the time, one or more nasal polyps forms in the maxillary or ethmoid sinus. Nasal polyps can get large, the size of a pea, but they're usually non-cancerous, meaning they don't break through the basement membrane of the epithelium. Unfortunately, though, they often obstruct airflow as well as mucus drainage, which allows pathogens to linger in the sinuses and cause infections. Recurrent infections causes mucosal swelling as immune cells infiltrate the tissue and create an inflammatory response. This swelling makes airway obstruction and mucus drainage even worse. The reason the epithelial cells start to grow into a polyp isn't entirely clear, but they're associated with seasonal allergies, having frequent asthma exacerbations, as well as chronic sinusitis. There are some genetic factors that seem to be related as well. For example, individuals with cystic fibrosis and primary ciliary dyskinesia both have a high risk of developing nasal polyps. The symptoms of nasal polyps are usually related to blocked mucus drainage and obstructed airflow. As the polyps grow, they occlude the nearby coenae and block sinus mucus drainage. This can leave the sinuses full of secretions that get infected, causing bouts of fevers and headaches. Obstructed airflow can prevent air from reaching the olfactory region and decrease the sense of smell. It can also cause snoring and sleep apnea. And in young infants, it can cause reduced levels of oxygenation, called hypoxia, which gives a bluish tinge to their skin color. Nasal polyps are diagnosed visually with nasal endoscopy, or by medical imaging with a CT scan. Diagnosis is often made after clinical symptoms become problematic, but changes to the respiratory mucosa can be detected even in their absence. The treatment for polyps is to shrink them using steroids usually in the form of a nasal spray. The steroids act to decrease the inflammation and swelling from the polyp. But some polyps are unresponsive to steroids. This tends to happen when there are high levels of eosinophils, a specialized type of immune cell. In these cases, endoscopic sinus surgery might be needed to cut them out. Unfortunately, because the underlying causes for polyps are often chronic conditions like allergies and asthma, polyps often return, so repeat treatments are typically needed. All right, as a quick recap, nasal polyps form as a result of hyperplasia of the epithelial cells that line the respiratory region, especially in the maxillary and ethmoidal sinuses. Their growth obstructs airflow through the nasal cavity and prevents sinus mucus from draining normally. They're treated with steroids or sometimes surgery, but have a high likelihood of coming back. Hey guys, Vince here. So it's not very often you hear something described as large and the size of a garden pea in the same sentence. Of course, this is all relative to your sinuses, but I thought that was a pretty funny way to state that. Anyway, I hope that you found today's video on nasal polyps useful. The script was written by Amanda Grieco. It was edited by Rishi Desai. Tana Marshall performed the voiceover and I created the illustrations. If you'd like to support the creation of more of these types of videos, Check out our website at osmosis.org where you'll find flashcards and quizzes and other great stuff that'll help you learn medicine. 
Otherwise, you can always subscribe to our channel on YouTube or donate to us on Patreon. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.